Hi, this is Dr. Gunduski. I'm going to talk about knee pain right now. Um, I think uh, hopefully you'll learn a little bit about what could be bugging you if your knee hurts. Knee pain can be pretty disabling. It can really keep you away from things you want to do and uh, be quite annoying. And so we'll learn a little bit about knee anatomy and the things that can go wrong with the knee that can cause pain. So first, really in order to understand what can cause knee pain, you really need to know a little bit about anatomy and kind of uh, go over some things in the knee joint. So here's a picture of the knee from the front. There's three bones that make up the knee joint. There's the femur on the top, the tibia on the bottom, and the kneecap in the front. And so like in all joints, there's cartilage on the ends of the bones. On the end of the femur, that white stuff there is the uh, cartilage. And there's also cartilage on the top of the, the tibia joint and cartilage on the back of the patella, which is the kneecap. And that articulation is the knee joint itself. Inside the knee joint, you have a meniscus on each side. There's one on the inside called the medial meniscus and one on the outside called the lateral meniscus. Um, and in between the femur, and what's called a notch of the femur in the middle, um, attaching between the tibia and the femur is the ACL and the PCL. Those ligaments provide front to back stability of the knee joint. The side to side stability of the knee joint is created by ligaments that are on the outside of the actual joint itself. The lateral collateral ligament and the medial collateral ligament, the medial collateral ligament being on the outside, uh, sorry, the inside, and the lateral collateral ligament being on the outside. So these ligaments provide side to side type stability of the knee joint. And that's the knee joint. I'm going to show you uh, in a model a little bit more about what that knee looks like, just so you can get an idea about the uh, knee itself. So this is a knee model. Uh, this knee model has cartilage and has the soft tissue structures inside the knee joint. And so uh, this will probably help, I think, you know, show you a little bit about, about what we were looking at with that picture three-dimensionally. So in the knee model, this is the femur, this is the tibia. In between the two bones, we have cartilage. So that blue stuff here on the end of the femur, the blue stuff on the top of the tibia, that's cartilage. And so from the side, this is the way the knee joint moves. It bends back and forth like this, okay? So in addition to the bones and the cartilage on the, in the knee, like we talked about, you have a meniscus. So this is the meniscus uh, between, the, between the bones on the outside of the knee. This is the meniscus on the inside of the knee, so medial meniscus, lateral meniscus. The meniscus is a soft tissue structure. It goes around the periphery of the joint. It's supposed to stay in the periphery, uh, and it increases the concavity of the knee joint and provides a little bit of support and cushion uh, to the uh, ends of the bones. Okay, so that's supposed to stay on the periphery and exist there. In between the knee and the notch of the femur, you can see those ligaments on the inside there in the middle. Uh, that's where the ACL and the PCL are. The ACL is in the front. The PCL is in the back. Uh, and then again from the front, you can see the ligaments. This is the outside of the knee. So on the outside, here's a lateral collateral ligament. On the inside, the medial collateral ligament. And pretty simply from a stability standpoint, you've probably heard of people that have had ACL or PCL ruptures or, menis or um, uh, uh, injury to their, to their uh, ligaments in their knee. Um, the ACL and the PCL really provide front to back stability. So from the side, they prevent the knee from going too far front to back this way. Uh, whereas the MCL and the LCL, this being the MCL from the front, they prevent the knee from going too far side to side this way. So those are really strong ligaments and the MCL specifically is very important for knee balance um, and uh, um, kinematics. And so that provides side to side stability, that's the MCL and the LCL. Uh, so that's, that's the main aspects of the knee joint. Um, and so again, uh, what, one thing that's not pictured here is the kneecap. So this is the front of the knee. In the front of the knee, the kneecap exists right here. And when you bend your knee, the kneecap runs in the groove of the femur against this cartilage right here. There is the kneecap is uh, suspended in space in the front. It's attached to the quadriceps muscle and tendon, which attaches the quadriceps muscle to the actual kneecap here. And then from the kneecap down, the patellar tendon inserts onto the what's called the tibial tubercle, which is that little bump on the front of your knee. The patellar tendon comes down there and that inserts there, and that's what's called your extensor mechanism. That's what, that's what lets you straighten your leg. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about some pathology that can bug the quadriceps tendon or other patellar tendon as well. So we talk about the possibilities for a knee joint. We talk about uh, what's called a differential diagnosis. So we'll go over some of those things. 
Um, there are soft tissue problems and there are bony cartilage problems. And so uh, from a soft tissue standpoint, you can strain or tear ligaments in the knee. So we talked about the medial collateral ligament, lateral collateral, excuse me, collateral ligament, the ACL and the PCL. So uh, you can strain those ligaments, you can, you can completely rupture those ligaments and those can cause knee instability. Um, the quadriceps and patellar tendon, the ones that insert into the kneecap, you can rupture those tendons completely and or get some inflammation and tendonitis of those tendons, which can be irritating. And then one very common pathology in the knee is meniscal tears. So you can tear the meniscus. That image on the right shows some the red areas where the meniscus has been torn. So instead of being that normal gray where the meniscus lives on the periphery of the joint, you can see those red areas where the meniscus has torn. And, and that can cause pain because the meniscus is innervated um, and it will be irritating because it's now uh, torn and, and in between the bones getting irritated. It can also flip in between the joint and cause symptoms, which we'll talk about in a little bit. You can also get some inflammation or tendonitis of all of these things. You can get some inflammation of the iliotibial band, which is on the side of the leg. Uh, you can get tendonitis like we talked about in the quadriceps or patellar tendons. And also your hamstrings tendons, which are in the back of your thigh, insert onto the back of your tibia and fibula, and those can get irritated. And GS stands for your gastroxoleus, which is your calf muscle. Those muscles actually insert under the back of your femur, and those can also sometimes get strained or irritated. So these are some of the soft tissue things that can happen to a knee. And uh, now we'll move on to some bony and cartilage things that can happen to a knee. So of course you can fall and break your bones of your leg. Um, this is uh, a very traumatic events in general uh, that occur with people when uh, enough forces happens to actually break the bones. Otherwise, from a cartilage and bone standpoint, we're really mostly talking about arthritis. Um, cartilage wear and tear is called osteoarthritis, and uh, inflammatory arthritis is a condition that can cause inflammation in the joint and destroy the cartilage. And one of the more common ones of these would be things like rheumatoid arthritis. Osteoarthritis is the most common type of arthritis. That's wear and tear type arthritis, and generally will uh, destroy the cartilage in a joint slowly over time. And we'll talk more about that. Really, many short-term things like strains and sprains and tendonitis will get better with time. Uh, a lot of times we'll recommend things like anti-inflammatories, rest and ice. Um, and there's another talk that will really talk about treatment options for the full discussion of options for hip and knee um, issues. But a lot of short-term things like injuries that are strains and sprains, tendonitis, uh, they will get better with time. The inflammation from these things will decrease to the point that the symptoms will go away. Um, but I'm really going to focus on two things in the knee that can be chronic sources of pain and really affect your quality of life. Uh, these things are really things that I see very, very commonly in my office, which is things like meniscal tears and arthritis. So we talked a little bit about meniscal anatomy. Um, remember that the meniscus is on the periphery of the joint and exists out there. Um, and meniscal tears can be traumatic or atraumatic. And so people are often surprised when they have, for instance, a meniscal tear as a source of pain, but they really haven't had an injury. But the meniscus is a soft tissue structure that's kind of getting beat up your entire life. And when it gets partially torn a little bit with activity, it can rupture with simple day-to-day -day activities. And it doesn't have to really be a big traumatic event to have it tear when you get older. When you're younger, it will generally be a traumatic event. It'll be a football tackle or something pretty significant usually that will tear the meniscus. But when you're older, it's very common for these things to occur just with sort of day-to-day -day type activities. Symptoms of a meniscal tear include um, joint line pain and tenderness. So right at the joint line between where those bones are, if your pain is there and when you push on that spot, it really hurts a lot, that could be a meniscal tear. Very commonly, because of the way the meniscus is stressed in deep flexion, patients with pain with deep flexion, so deep knee bending type activities like squats or lunges or kneeling, will have pain in the knee with meniscal tears. In addition, because sometimes the meniscal tissue will get in between the bones, sometimes patients can get popping, clicking, and sometimes true locking where the knee actually locks up. Again, these can be traumatic or atraumatic, uh, and then they can be acute or chronic degenerative tears. Acute tears uh, or, uh, happen more commonly in younger patients. Chronic degenerative tears are incredibly common in uh, older patients. Treatment 
of meniscal tears is such that sometimes they will go away on their own. So your body goes through a process of kind of grinding th these things down over time such that they usually be fairly dynamic symptoms. So if you have a small meniscal tear with day-to-day -day activity, sometimes your knee will actually kind of grind the tear down and make it so that it becomes asymptomatic and not really bug you a whole lot. Um, otherwise, treatment really rests around waiting on things to uh, get better over time, to not do activities that irritate it, to take anti-inflammatories when it gets inflamed, sometimes physical therapy, and then really just seeing what the natural history of the meniscal tear is going to be. If you have a big meniscal tear that's significantly large and really getting stuck between the bones and causing a lot of symptoms uh, and not going away, then we start thinking about arthroscopy, which is um, incisions in the knee to look inside the knee with a camera and then to repair or to breed the meniscal tissue to get rid of that tear. Uh, and that is really reserved for patients who aren't getting better with non-surgical things um, and uh, a tear that's big and persists and keeps affecting quality of life and uh, is not getting better. Well, let's talk a little bit of, about arthritis. Um, arthritis is loss of cartilage in the knee. Um, symptoms of arthritis are such that it is often acute onset, and this is surprising to patients. You know, people think arthritis will be slow and progressive such that it'll happen over decades and get worse and worse and worse. But really what's happening usually with arthritis is that the cartilage is slowly wearing away over time, over decades, but you don't really notice any symptoms until it gets to a critical level. And so uh, the pain can just all of a sudden come on with or without a traumatic event, uh, but it's really that background arthritis that's been happening for a long time, uh, it's slowly getting to the point where now it's, it's severe to the point that you're starting to notice it. Um, in general, this can happen with or without an injury. Um, it will tend to be worse with increased activity. So patients with uh, knee arthritis who try to hike up a mountain or do something aggressive are generally going to get more pain and inflammation than somebody who's not doing any physical activity. Uh, but, but when it gets really severe, very limited physical activity can also cause some discomfort. It's also really common for patients to complain of pain at night with arthritis. During the day, you're up and you're around and you're moving and you're creating a lot of inflammation in the joint. Um, and, but because your brain is focused on so many other things, uh, it's oftentimes not till nighttime that patients really notice that the worst of their symptoms are at night. So that's a very common way to feel arthritic pain. The ache from arthritis in the knee is often all over the knee. So patients will usually say it hurts all over. Uh, I can't really tell exactly one specific point where it bugs me, but it's all over. Um, other times when there's really specific arthritis in certain parts, like for instance, a patient who has a really bow-legged knee generally will wear out the cartilage of the inside aspect of the knee. And when that's the case, pain will occur a lot of times more frequently on the inside of the knee and sometimes radiate down the inside of the leg all the way down to the ankle as opposed to a knock knee type knee or a valgus knee arthritis, where the pain will more commonly be in the back of the knee and the outside of the knee and the front of the knee. Um, but otherwise, because the joint gets swollen uh, throughout the entire 360 degrees of that capsule of the knee joint, um, oftentimes the knee is felt all, uh, sorry, the knee pain is felt all over, um, especially in the back of the knee because there's some pain receptors in the back of the knee capsule. When the knee swells up, the knee will tend to bug people in the back. Sometimes patients with knee arthritis will complain of some instability in the knee. This really comes generally from a sensation of pain. So meaning that when you step on the knee, if it's arthritic and it hurts, your brain tells you that it hurts and it wants to take pressure off of it and it will feel unstable and make it feel like you're going to fall. But that's different than true ligamentous instability, like a patient who has a complete tear of their ACL, for instance, that actually has a ligamentous instability of their knee. Um, in arthritis, it tends to be more of a pain-driven subjective sense of instability without a true ligamentous instability. It's really important to know that in severe arthritis, the meniscus almost always becomes completely superfluous, meaning that uh, every single person with severe arthritis in the knee has a meniscal tear because the meniscus is kind of an innocent bystander that gets beat up in the process. Uh, but the meniscus is generally almost always never the pain generator. The pain generator is the arthritis, and so that's important because now we need to focus on the arthritis treatment as a way to help make you better uh, for that type of pathology, as opposed to somebody who has no arthritis and just a meniscal tear, which we're talking about the other treatment options for meniscal pathology like we talked about. But some patients think that we can go in and clean up a knee with arthritis, with, a, with arthroscopy or a knee scope, and this really is not a viable way to help somebody with arthritis. And 
it's very common for people to get MRIs, for instance, that will show a meniscal tear and um, they will be told or convinced that the pain is coming from the meniscal tear, uh, where in the setting of severe arthritis, the arthritis is almost always the severe pain generator. Uh, and then again, the meniscus is really a superfluous issue that is, that is just uh, happening in the background, but not a pain generator. So that's important to know, and that's a very common thing. The cartilage loss in a knee can range from mild to severe. So when you have mild cartilage loss, non-operative treatment can help reduce pain and inflammation. So things like activity modifications, keeping your weight down, anti-inflammatories, Tylenol, injections, therapy, and sometimes bracing can help for knee arthritis. Um, when it's severe arthritis, when you have really severe bone-on-bone -bone type arthritis and you failed non-surgical management and you're having day-to-day -day issues and quality of life issues, then we start thinking about ways to fix the knee. The only way to fix knee arthritis completely is with a replacement currently, and knee replacement for that reason is a very common surgery. Um, I have some other talks that talk about treatment options uh, for hips and knees as well as uh, knee replacement if you'd like some more information. But uh, hopefully this talk was uh, helpful in giving you an idea about what can cause knee pain specifically. Uh, big issues that really can cause a lot of quality of life limitations like and meniscal pathology. Those are the most common. Uh, but hopefully also learned about other things around the knee that can bug you and uh, some anatomy. So thank you.